We are QOTD, and you are watching the Question of the Day show, the game show that lets you be on the air. And you can always join us by recording your own video answers to our awesome daily questions. And now we are at a little thing that we like to call the Thursday Big Show. Hey, Trish. Hey, JJ. Welcome to the Thursday Big Show. Hi. Hello. So all week long, fans have been answering our questions. Every day we've been putting out a new question. Every day you've been giving us a ton of awesome answers. And everybody has been voting and sending stars. And through that process, our AI has selected the best videos from the week. And so here during the Thursday Big Show, we're going to go through our seven questions from the week, six answers from each question, the best ones. And now you're going to vote. Who is going to be the champion of the week? And that is the QOTD Game Show. So it's been a pretty good week. It's been sort of like a sort of a dirty, sexy kind of week. <laughs> you don't mind me saying the questions are a little offbeat. Who wrote those questions, Trish? Well, I don't know. I'm not going to admit to writing any of the questions, but you know, the theme was sort of a sweltering, sweaty summertime, summertime. That was our theme. Oh. And sticking with the S's, the QOTDs were all about Skywriting and sweet gifts and sage advice and sex and sugar. Yeah, so it's a hot summer night theme, like a cat on a hot tin roof. I get it. <laughs> yep. So I cannot wait to see how the fans have responded to these questions because it's pretty funny. Oh. It's great. You want to dive right in? I certainly do. Excellent. I'm just sitting here with that tense feeling like a cat <laughs> on a hot tin roof. <laughs> well, the first question that we asked for this week was, what is the best piece of advice that you received that you would like to share with the world? Ooh, this this could be fun. advice from a parent, from a friend. See, I love the idea of it because we've got the whole internet like giving us their best advice. And then we're selecting from the best advice, the best, best advice. And so we're sort of like a crowd sharing our opinions and coming up with the single best piece of advice that we should all follow. It's very, very on trend, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they, I mean, they, I mean, it does make sense that the winner of today, it's like the people call, decide on the best piece of advice, then that is the best piece of advice because it applies to the most people. Um, oh, I, I also, I do have a piece of advice that I have been meaning to say, um, uh, because we all have really good advice. I remember from, uh, the recap show on Friday mm -hmm. when this question was released, but there's one more. And that is if you're doing any sort of like skin or face care, like if you're putting on a mask, putting on creams or something, wash your hands before you do that. Because if you don't, you're going to get all of that grime and stuff on your face. And it's basically canceling out all the exfoliating that you're doing. See, this is the kind of wisdom that we promise you here on QOTD. I'll give you one. My mother-in-law says, drink hot liquids on a hot day. and It'll make you feel cool in comparison. Really? Have I'm, you tried a little, I'm suspect. But that's what she says. It's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. I've never heard that before. I'll have to try I, that because it's not, summertime. Summertime. Exactly. I'm trying to stick with that. It's hot theme. Absolutely. Today. But yeah, now maybe that's not good advice. I can't even tell, but I'm sure that the fans have some great advice for us and we shall be the judges. Oh, I should say, as these things are playing, you can send stars and then at the end of the round, the blue voting buttons will show up on the bottom of the screen. That's your chance to vote and tell us which of these sounds like, you know, really awesome sage advice and which is complete BS. It's up to you. Yes, yes. And you can go to beyondtheart.com to send those stars and vote for your favorite answers. Yes, there is a link in the chat, my friends. Yes, there is. Well, without further ado, I think we have some fan answers coming in. So let's see what advice they have to give to our viewers here. The best piece of advice I've ever received is you cannot control others. You can only control how, you're, how you react. Yes. And, yeah, that's going to give you some... So growing some good up, I was always told... Your attitude will determine your altitude. And it stuck with me. And I didn't really understand it until I got older, but it has stuck with me all this time. And I'm like, now that I got it, I'm gonna hold on to it and I'm gonna keep on sharing. I do like advice that rhymes, I, I have to say. 
I was told a long time ago that I don't need to apologize for taking space in people's lives. And I really wish I'd believed it and listened to it so long ago, but I think it's important that people know that like you're allowed to lay boundaries and you're allowed to tell people like, Hey, please don't say that to me. It upsets me. Like, and if they get upset about it, that's their problem. Not you. I'm a big bad person. I love it. The best advice I've ever received was never to settle in a job that I am unhappy in. I should chase my passion, do what I love because life is short. Or really long if you've got a boring job. I think the best piece of advice I've been given over the years that I would like to share is probably to not worry about what you can't control, whether it be how other people feel or what other people do. Everybody has their own life and has their own decisions to make. So worrying about someone else's is a waste of time. Hmm. Not all that you guys the best piece of advice that I've ever received is to save as much money as you possibly can while still living at the same time and not preventing yourself from enjoying life in the moment. I need a percentage. Megan, it's good advice. I need a number. That's the kind of guy I am. 10%. Say 10%. Hey, everybody, it's time to vote. Uh, there are lots of great answers here. So you're going to have to pick one. The way that you vote is by clicking on the blue buttons that are appearing on the bottom of your screen. If, say, you're on YouTube or Twitch and you don't see those buttons, click the link in the chat and it'll take you to a page where you can very quickly link and continue watching the show. Because we got to send one of these people to the finals and the answer is up to you. So go ahead and give us a vote. A lot of people are saying they're talking about how you have to be sort of internally driven and not too much worried about how other people will react to you. You just gotta, you gotta, you gotta think about number one, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it is such a waste of time. You're so concerned about somebody who's probably not real concerned about you right now. Yes. Smart. Yeah. Good way of putting it. Andre. Andre says that your attitude determines your altitude. He's full of good advice. Yeah. Andre's I, a real star. I was so interested because his answer was so good. I checked out his profile and he is among other things. He's a very varied person, but he's among other things, a motivational speaker. And I, and it totally makes sense, right? Oh, it does. Yeah. Well, good job, Andre. We appreciate that piece of advice. And that kind of rolls right into our next question, which is a little one that we call your family rocks. We wanted to know what makes your family so different or special or unique. There were a lot of people that referenced advice that they got from family members, and maybe that's part of what makes their family great. Uh, my family is full of advice, full of it. <laughs> but I love them. It's part of what makes my family unique and special. We all have each other's backs all the time for every reason, but we do question each other. We might even challenge each other on something. Are you sure this is the right decision? You thought this through. Um, so I think that that's what I love about my family. We never go against each other, but we never go all in without having all the information that we need then. Yeah. 100%. It's like the Godfather, right? <laughs> they never criticize each other in public. My family is nothing like the Godfather. <laughs> No, I've met your family. I like your family a lot. Yeah, they're like the godfather on a farm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the hog father. It's like the, <laughs> the, the cheesy version. Yeah, right. Did you say the cud father? <laughs> no, that doesn't rhyme. Where's Andre to help us with our rhymes? The clod, you said clod, clod father? The, yeah. the hog father. The hog. <laughs> Hod apparently has a meaning in rural America, uh, but here in urban America, we don't know what a hod is. <laughs> anyway, families, right? Yes. yes. Your family's awesome. I really like them. And they are totally different. And, and I think that that's kind of an amazing thing. The thing you didn't mention is that they're really funny, all of them. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I'm definitely the least funniest in the family. <laughs> Thank you something. It's this combination of being very funny and being very mean. <laughs> yeah. You're always you on your toes. 
Hey, but I mean, if you can't tell someone like it is, but also sprinkle in like a little sugar and a little humor in there, is it, what are you doing? That's a skill, right? it's a talent. Mm -hmm. Healthy boundaries, right? Exactly, exactly. Well, I think we have some answers coming in from fans about why their families are so cool. So let's say, let's see if their humor and their honesty measure up to Trisha's family. Let's see what they have to say. I'm an Indian and um, my family is very accepting of other identities and religions, which are not, which is not always the case because, you know, there are some people that like to stay within themselves, stay within their community. My family is very accepting of others. And I think that's just what makes them different and wonderful because I don't get to see a lot of that from other um, Indian families. And my family is just very chill and very open to hearing other people's opinions. And they love learning about other people's beliefs and customs and religion. And I just think that makes my family different. And it's, it's amazing. And that's awesome. Yeah, my, my family's a bit clannish. Mm. This question is really easy to answer because my family comes from two different backgrounds. My father is Muslim and he's Arab, Sudanese to be specific. And my mom is Hungarian and she was raised up uh, in Christianity. And I turned out to be a believer in none, but I do believe that we all are one. <laughs> that, that, you know, we all connect. I love it. Loves his family. I love my family because they are, they're just unique. There's no one like them on earth because they're their own people and they have their own personalities and they have their own unique flaws and what's the opposite of a flaw? Virtue. Benefits? I don't know. And they, so they have their strengths and weaknesses, much like the ensemble cast of friends. What right. makes your family different and wonderful? Um, <laughs> I believe the answer is magic. Um, they can disappear. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, eat together, fun together, and celebrate together makes my family wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Celebrate. Celebrate yeah. good times, come on. Exactly. <laughs> Let's get together. Honestly, the fact that we're all still together. Uh, my husband and I are still together. My parents are still together. And his parents are still together. I'd say that's pretty different and pretty wonderful. That is pretty different. Yeah, what are the odds? It's like 40% now. Something crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know people and I'm not surprised. <laughs> anyway, it's time. <laughs> well, there was a lot of like really good stuff here. Robin says her family is like really accepting of other kinds of people and ethnicities and religions. And that's really great. Makes them stronger. Smiley, they have like tremendous diversity in their family. And that brings together this like appreciation of the world. That's really awesome. Devin, you know what? They're unique and wonderful. They have their strengths and weaknesses. Like friends or like the, the gang on Scooby-Doo. You know, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Vav, her family, they know when it's time to leave, right? They know how to... <laughs> They know when it's time to duck out, unlike my family. Juwan's family, man, they celebrate good times together, and Sarah is beating the odds with a family where everybody stays together. Let's vote for one of these guys, which is the one that you find inspiring, entertaining, or that you agree with the most, or you just like that number, you know? <laughs> one of those buttons, let's send one of these people to the final. That is an underappreciated um, way to decide who to vote for. Which number do you like the best? Right. <laughs> Which is your lucky number? Oh, I don't like want to SAT. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if your well, SAT scores is, is can be made out of these numbers, I'm a little worried. I guess you can start uh, the one. <laughs> the combined score. Oh. oh wait, what did they say? Pick C, right? Yes. All the. Oh. Uh, yeah, so Jawad, his family, like, they eat together, do other things together, celebrate together, you know, and, and I guess that that's really what it's all about, right? It's not just you want to have people who, like, theoretically are there to support you. You want to have people who, like, you can go face to face with. Right? And that you enjoy spending time with, right? That you're not fighting with. That's right. You know, we love spending time with even more than the people in our lives. We love spending time with the animals in our lives. And that leads to our very next question. 
which is what makes your pet, yes, your pet, the very best in all the world. Everyone thinks that they uh, have the best pet, but we know they don't. Cause because, I do. yeah. <laughs> Pete, you're always bragging on those uh, little wiener dogs or whatever you got. What, what makes your pet the best in all the world? Oh my God, you're telling me little wiener dogs. My dogs are awesome. My, yeah, I've got these two like uh, Spinoni Italianos. They're like these big bird dogs. But the thing that's really great about them is that they have wonderful senses of humor. Like, you know, <laughs> we'll like we'll go out to dinner on say somebody's birthday and they'll like, and they're big. They're like, you know, 80, 90 pound dogs. They'll like hop up on the table and go hide the birthday cake. You know, that kind of thing. Or they'll do other funny things like bring in a deer, something really cute like that. But they're, they're very funny dogs. They, they tell jokes in their own little doggy way. But you know, this question, like people love their animals, right? Mm -hmm. We're crazy about their, they call them fur babies. And I do think it's very interesting and perhaps a little disturbing that we lavish so much attention on our animals, but not so much uh, on our family members. You know, and what is it about the world that we live in these days that we feel more comfortable with yeah. our our non-speaking companions <laughs> than we are with our talking back, you know, slagging right. companions? So we just have higher that. expectations. Yeah, for humans, you know, you should know better, right? But a dog, ah, it's just a dog. It's, it's what dogs do. Yeah, so. but what kids like, you know, my crap's on the neighbor's lawn, you know, <laughs> problem when the dog does it we all like laugh and scoop it up right and then we move on yeah and also how likely is it that a human will bring in deer parts for you you know a human wouldn't do that a human would actively avoid it but a dog a dog or a cat they know they know that that's what we want as pet yeah, owners beg to differ but you know <laughs> so i think we have some answers coming in about from people about why their pets are the best so let's see if their dogs are also they also have a good sense of humor my dog, Tripsy, is the best dog ever. He is the best pet I ever had. And uh, and after I lost him, I, I, I no longer uh, got any pets of my own because it was so painful that I can never go through that again. And um, I miss him. That's, that's all I can say. You should write a song. And then pretend you're not talking about an animal, you know, in the song. It'd be really moving. My pet Prim is the cutest in the whole world, and she's really affectionate and really sweet. And she'll walk over to you and just wait to be petted or try to pet you. So she's really, really cute. Wonder what she is. She is she in the Hunger Games. I think she, that my dog is probably the best dog in the world because he has a big imagination. He thinks he's a pretty small dog. He thinks that he's the security guard, right? He thinks that he's gonna get things done. He's gonna be in his attack position, ready to go when there's actually nothing there. Doorbell rings, he's on duty, right? And he thinks that he can protect us. And it's cute, really, but um, I think he's the best because he believes he is the best, so. I, those little ankle biters, I think, are very scary. They're the most dangerous <laughs> dog to have. My pet, the best pet in the world is that they can float. Yeah, um, it's, it, it's, a, it's a rubber dog. Their name is Ducky, and Ducky can speak. What's up, Ducky? Dude, you need to see a therapist. <laughs> That's rude. What did that dog just call me? <laughs> the last pet I had was a dog, and my dog was the best dog in the world because he was so friendly. He loved playing with people. He had this pretty golden brown color with hazel green eyes, and that was one of the last things that... Oh, breaking my heart, Crystal. They are kind of the glue that holds our family together. What makes together. my pet the best? Well, let me tell you, I don't have one. Sarah, maybe they're <laughs> what's up? Together, get on it. Get a dog. Yeah, totally. Well, now it's time to vote. Are we gonna vote for Smiley and Tripsy. This is the best dog ever. Prim 
from the Hunger Games, who was also <laughs> a really great dog. Ramen's dog has delusions of grandeur, but you know, is always trying buff. Rubber Ducky, is that a pet? Crystal, she has a dog, it was the last present from her dad. She's really attached to it. Best dog in the whole world. And Sarah's like, none of the above. That's what she said. No pets for me. Let's vote for one of these people and send them to the finals. Who do you think had the best answer to your goat, the goat, Q-O-T-D, number something, 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 something. <laughs> I don't remember what number it is, but it was a big one. Is it? I don't remember either. Off the top right of my up, head. Up there in the 50s. Mm. Or something. Yeah. There's a lot of questions these days, guys. There's a lot to answer. You know, on the website, sure. you can actually crawl through or, or on YouTube through the playlist. You can crawl through all of the questions and all the answers. And it, it, it's like, it's like poking mm. in somebody's garage. <laughs> uh, hey! <laughs> Not a bad choice. Yeah. Baff right. with the rubber ducky wins the best pet award. I can't believe it. Nobody <laughs> said hypoallergenic. <laughs> That's you right. For that, you know? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Nice. Well, moving on. We asked people, if you could hire a skywriter for one day, what is your message to the world? This didn't necessarily have to be a piece of advice. It could be a funny message. This could be just a, a little words of wisdom, um, anything. And people gave all different answers to it. So we were wondering, what do you guys think? Hmm. This is a good one. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I mean, we talked about it on for Monday's recap when this question came out. Um, there's two options really there's like the inspirational side and then there's the chaotic side and if you know me you know i always love to cause a little bit of chaos <laughs> so i think i've thought about it and i have another idea on top of writing gullible on top of rick rolling the populace um and on top of the will you marry me the fake proposal there's the other one where you go into the sky and you have enough time of course to write um lost earbud lost airpods or lost earbuds lost big item find me at this location to uh pick up your purchase and so you get a bunch of people who did lose that item and then also probably a bunch of people who didn't lose that item. <laughs> do oh, you yeah. have the item i don't know i might have the item i might not but then you just get a flock of people coming by <laughs> the see item. airpods are a good choice because maybe there's some people with lefts and rights and they could work something out Yes. Yeah. That is spoken oh, like a man who has lost one. Yeah, or had them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, as I should mention, there, whether or not I actually have the item, up for the debate. You know, just to get people to come over and say hi to me. <laughs> it's just an expensive practical joke that JJ would like to play with the world. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We have fun on QOTV all the time, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we have some answers coming in from fans. Let's see if they choose chaos, if they want to watch the world burn, or if they go the inspiration route. Let's see. If I was a skywriter, I would definitely write, get vaccinated. If it were any other time than now, though, I would probably write, worry less and donate more. Because I think that we're all happier when we give, which I know sounds silly, but it's what I think. It's not silly. I would say you're happier when you give. Mm -hmm. If I could hire a skywriter for the day, it would just send a positive message about love and peace and just happiness. Just to get that message across to everybody that um, in these times, everything's going to be okay. She's like a modern day flower child. Love, peace, and happiness. I would say chase the dream that you're made for. Yeah, it, it falls right in the, in the play with who we are and whose we are. I think that would be the way to. Who we are and whose we are. He's getting all like verklempt. That's that. <laughs> I guess I'd have to go with the classic uh, Surrender Dorothy. Uh, probably <laughs> needs to be written up in the sky um, on a regular basis. Yes. And from JJ <laughs> Camp is Ted N with some chaos. <laughs> if I could hire a skywriter for one day, my message would be to be kind to others, but I would shorten it to be kind. 
Um, so others can be kind to everybody else and spread positivity. Hmm? Be kind. Simple. Two words, but they mean a lot. If I was a skywriter, I would definitely do like short two to three word like phrases that are be positive motivating because it's just like really cool to see something being written in the sky in general but uh you know that there's going to be someone that it's going to apply to if you say like be patient or your time is coming right uh, your right. time is coming <laughs> right what were those big t-shirts uh, <laughs> these things Guys, it's time to vote. There are blue buttons across the bottom of your screen. If you don't see blue buttons, click on the link in chat and head on over to beyondtheair.com where you can vote for these guys right away. Uh, and then you got the big choice of who to vote for. Is it going to be Parker or Heather or Andre or Ted? Uh, my eyes are really here. I see Alexa on the ring with the <laughs> number five. <laughs> it's a lot alana and alexa so the last time. alana thank you it's there's a little thing covering up on my screen but but yeah now everybody had some pretty good answers you know from like the super sage uh to sort of the inspirational and then finally the humorous like surrender dorothy or be kind or chase the dream that you are made for all good answers true true and you really can't go wrong with any of these. I will say, like, the two ones, like, keep calm and carry on, I think is another one that would be really good. But, yeah, you, the inspirational ones, it's, like, it's, well, it's like they're so simple, but they definitely do apply, and they can, like, be a little, kick, uh, little like, extra push of motivation. And it could almost be, like, subliminal. Like, maybe you don't look up in the sky, but all of a sudden you feel like being kind. Yes. Because it's just sort of, like... Alexis, nice. Congratulations. Yeah, she has some some deep thoughts. Yeah, it's very People thoughtful. On a Q, you kind of get onto a jag and end up answering a bunch of answers kind of all upon a sudden. And so we do get to see sort of, I don't know, kind of the personalities of some of these characters. Yeah, Absolutely. if you end up going to their user pages, you can see kind of how they answered you know, five or 10 different questions. It's like, oh yeah, I would totally want to hang out. You know, I, some of them I would be like intimidated because they're too nice. <laughs> I can't possibly live up to that. <laughs> well, speaking of nice and speaking of making new friends, or maybe we're talking about your old friends. We are talking about the best gifts ever with our next question, we wanted to know what is the most thoughtful gift you ever received and who was it from? And this is a great question because thoughtful just means somebody's thinking of you, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that somebody had to knit you a sweater or a special order something from Etsy. This could be somebody just in the stores we talked about last week. You think about your friends and you just grab them something because they popped into your mind, they saw something. I have uh, a gift from my friend Christy. It's actually this candle and it smells really great. Mm -hmm. And she just saw it in a store and thought of me and purchased it. And it says, our friendship is like this candle. If you forget me, I'll burn your f***ing house down. <laughs> <laughs> that was so perfectly right. So thoughtful. Well said. <laughs> so like I said, funny and me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have some answers coming in from fans. Let's see if they have gifts that can match that in terms of kindness and in terms of humor. Okay, so the most thoughtful gift also I got it from my mom once. My mom gave me, you know, a keychain. The keychain had uh, written on it that life is all about patience. At the end, you have to wait for the death. Yeah. Especially if you're a doctor. It's all about patience. <laughs> Gosh. I think the most thoughtful gift someone has given to me was probably my mom and dad when they gave me my first soccer jersey. That was just awesome, you know? And uh, it started my love for soccer, so yeah. Wow. That's 
lifelong passion, right? That's pretty awesome. I got invited to floor seats at a Clipper game, and it was at a time in my life when I had just uh, gone through a surgery, and so it was really nice and comforting to know that people cared. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. Sometimes just like a little gift, not even for like a birthday or anything, it can mean a world. This question actually makes me a little bit sad because I've never had a best gift. I've never had a gift. My birthday is sandwiched between Christmas and New Year's Eve. And guess who gets skipped every year? Both ends. Oh, I'll get you something for your birthday. Oh, but not for Christmas. <laughs> Word. I'm right there with you, Pear. So my favorite gift is the one that's right behind me. It is a hand carved map from Etsy. My girlfriend gave it to me for our anniversary and it's the sweetest thing ever. Here's a close up. You can even see like the little pins on the map. It's just incredible. Etsy. It, it's Etsy is the place to get gifts. I would say. The most thoughtful gift that I got is probably my moonstone ring. Look at that because my boyfriend gave it to me for Christmas with the intention of possibly proposing in the next year. I mean, who wouldn't be excited about that? Do you like? I promise mm -hmm. ring. But yeah, ring. Both Angelisha and Christine, like their gifts are promises of sort of future things, right? The mm -hmm. gift of travel, these are all the places that we're gonna go together. And Angelisha is like, this is gonna be our lifetime together, but not yet. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Super oh, interesting. Goodness. Time to vote. Let's give the gift of a vote to one of these people, right? Mr. M or Beaton, Craig, Pear, Christina, Angelisha. They all deserve your vote. How will you decide? Go ahead and mash one of those buttons. Yeah. Do you really think that uh, Pear never had a gift in his life? Well, <laughs> he didn't get enough gifts, that's for sure. He mm. got a hat gifts that you got yeah now that honestly speaking of best piece of advice either get two gifts or get a really big gift that can double as a christmas and birthday but it's like it's big enough yeah but people are always discounting that I, 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 oh christina with the hand carved map yeah she's she's gonna be going places with her gift given friend it's pretty amazing and that is fun I know that in this in age, the best gift is, of course, experiences. And so that was kind of a, a token of future things that they're going to do. That is pretty inspiring. Yeah, somebody get get, get pair a gift, though. <laughs> We've got to send him like a QOTD t-shirt at least. Yeah, we've got to wait <laughs> right between Christmas and New Year's. And we'll send him two. We'll send mm -hmm. him dollars. This one's for right. your birthday. This one's for Christmas. We should just do like a monthly delivery to pair. It's like, all right, we're going to make up for everyone at any time. Oh, his well, we can just spread the love. Like 27 t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about love. We're going to talk about, well, hopefully not spreading things, but we're talking about your love life. And we wanted to know if your love life was a candy bar, what candy bar would it be? So... Very funny question. Very funny answers. I think I'm a little bit of a sweet tart. Mm. I think that's mm. Do yeah. you have a sweet tooth, Trish? <laughs> <laughs> a little sweet. I'm a little tart. I'm a little, yeah. I'm probably not everyone's favorite, but there it is. Because they don't know you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that the uh, throughout the week, like with all the puns that we've been making, Hershey's Kiss has not come up even once. I oh. know. Oh, my love life is like a Hershey's Kiss. It's, 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 it's filled with kisses. It's, a, it's yeah, it's wrapped in silver. I don't know. <laughs> it's wrapped. It's, oh, it's has wrapping. I'm wondering. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel like we, I think we kind of did all the puns. So I, I feel like, I think Hershey Kiss is the one that I would go with. Cause it's just like, you know, it's the, it's the obvious one. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Well, I think we have some answers coming in from fans. Let's see what their candy bars or general candy is for this question. I think we have some puns incoming. Let's see. 
If my love life was a candy bar, it would have to be a Snickers. Because I'm a little naughty, I like my men a little naughty and silly. <laughs> and I'm caramel and soft on the inside. And I like my men chocolate. <laughs> it's perfect for her. Snickers. Snickers? Um, if my life was love life was a candy bar. I'm just gonna make it a candy instead. I feel like it would be black licorice because for a really long time no one has liked me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know if this would be a good answer, but I guess there's no good answers. Um, I would say peanut M&Ms. I know that's not a candy bar, but this is how I look at it. My love life, mm -hmm. there's lots of different people from all walks of life that have come in and out of my love life. So to me, it's like the different colors of the peanut M&Ms on the outside. But then at the root of it all, on the inside, I feel like everyone that's walked into my love life has had like a very mature, um, like we've had a mature connection, um, at least on my end. So I look at like the peanut to be like that mature part of the candy. Um, so yeah, that's my, <laughs> that's what I would say for that answer. They come that's in all sweet. giant size bags too, in case you really <laughs> do, Sonia. If my life was a uh, candy bar, I think it would be a, Arrow ball, an arrow bar, yeah. Because it's uh kinda kinda empty. Have you <laughs> have you met so have you met uh, Alicia? If my <laughs> life was a candy bar, I would be a sneakers because you would have this nutty chocolate caramel flavored person with a little nougat in the middle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Snickers. It's my love life was a candy bar, it would be the Zero candy bar. Zero air bar black licorice. <laughs> We're going to we'll change the numbers at the end of this whole thing. Guys, it's time to, uh, what are we voting for? Snickers, black licorice, big bag of M&Ms, air bar, horse Snickers, a zero bar. Which is the best? Which do you agree with? What describes your love life? What do you think is the funniest? Hmm. Yeah. Let's send these guys to the finals. And maybe to, what do they call them? The, the wall of candy? <laughs> Hershey's Chocolate World. <laughs> yeah. But like when you go to like a baseball game or you go to like a birthday party sometimes, they've got the big wall of candy. And you just go and you take all the candy you want. Whatever <laughs> that describes you. Oh, uh, you grew up in such a different world than me. You didn't get involved. It's like Halloween, right? You come back with a bag. Hey, the zero bar. Hey. Um, Humor goes a long way. It does, it does. But never give up hope, Alicia, Chris, and Knox. There is someone out there for everyone, and there will be someone for you very soon. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, a lot of people like black licorice. So just saying, you hang in there. <clears throat> well, we are up to today's QOTD. That was released just a couple hours ago. So that's exciting. And you can see with my background that says, no, 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 no. The reason is because our QOTD is who do you owe an apology to and why do you refuse to give it? So. I feel like everybody knows somebody that they probably could say a little bit of, you know, sorry to. I unfortunately have somebody that I owe an apology to. Go on. I'm, you know, and it's hard to say I'm sorry, right? Because, you know, seldom is it where one person is totally at fault, you know? <laughs> Sometimes there's a certain amount of shared responsibility and it's like, well, certainly I owe you an apology, but I don't necessarily want to say I'm sorry first because, you know, maybe you're not going to fess up. And I'm talking about my daughter. She was being annoying. We were at a party and I told her exactly what I thought of her behavior in a public place. And she was 
so embarrassed and humiliated. So I definitely am sorry for how I chose to express my feelings. I really am sorry about that. But I haven't said I'm sorry yet, except right now. Hopefully you're watching. And, I am really sorry. And what but, took you so long? That was the second half of the question. Why, why did you refuse to give it? Because like everybody else, I want her to say I'm sorry first. That's what she's waiting for. She knows she did something bad, but she's not going to say I'm sorry. And I'll tell you something else. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I've been married like almost 30 years now, right? My wife has never said, I'm sorry to me. Never. Not once. But she's and probably she never done anything wrong. anything wrong. Or maybe we don't say I'm sorry a lot around here. Uh -huh. I could be wow. waiting until I'm blue in the face before my daughter says I'm sorry. And I don't want this hanging over me. So I'm just going to go. I'll be the first one. Okay, you ready? Here it goes. I'm going to start with my part of the exchange. I'm sorry, honey. Oh. Me like, you have something that you would like to say to me. Let's just say. <laughs> Let's bring her on the air next week. <laughs> yes. Let's have a full live apology. I. And we'll have just a family therapy session here on <laughs> Trish and I will be like, so what may, why do you think you think that? <laughs> <laughs> I really Putting, I don't I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, that was just one, yeah, saying things that you probably shouldn't have said, at least not in the way that you said it, but if it's what's in your heart, you know, people say it. I think that that's actually a common thread through many of the sorry, not sorry stories that we've heard so far this week from the fans. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So we can, with that, I think we can take a look at some of those answers and see what apologies they still have to give. I really believe in apologizing to people. I think that people deserve to know when they're not in the wrong and a lot of people don't know that they're that they were not wrong until you're like, "Hey, sorry." But I, and I think it's important to give people that closure, but there are definitely some people who like don't want to hear an apology because they don't want to acknowledge that it happened and they're, you know, everyone has one or two of them. Mm. Yeah, sometimes it's better to just let it Pass. I would probably have to mm. say one of my exes uh, I probably owe an apology to. Yeah, they're not getting them. Look, let's be completely honest. Just and he's a motivational speaker. <laughs> someone like, no. I owe an apology to, but refuse no. to give it to, is this girl in my elementary school. She was a bully. But what did you do? What did just you do? Uh, I for? definitely owe an apology to one of my teachers because when I was in primary school, I had insulted a picture he showed me. But I never said sorry because I was just embarrassed. And so I kind of just ran away instead of apologizing. A teacher shoved her. I'm not oh, showed, like showed her a picture. That's an adult. <laughs> I feel like I owe someone from my past an apology, but I mean, we don't talk. So she blocked me on social media. I can't apologize and I'm not going to track her down. So I guess she won't ever get it. So long, sister. Yeah, she blocked you. That's her fault. I'm a pretty honest person, so I don't think that I owe anyone an apology. Um, if I do owe you an apology, I'm sorry for whatever. <laughs> the blanket apology to the world. Yeah. That's her skywriting message. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So is it going to be Sadie, Andre, Kendra, Rihanna, Angel, or Megan, all of whom seem to be holding on to a little bit of guilt? Some, like two of them back from elementary school. Mm -hmm. You guys should... <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's vote for one of these people. Which is the best story that you heard? Maybe it's one that's similar to an experience that you've had, or maybe you just like the cut of their jib. Go ahead. And <laughs> <laughs> what? The cut jib. You know, the shape of their sail. You've never heard that phrase? <laughs> oh, sorry. Not. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you don't know what English idioms, <laughs> I guess. 
Lord. Mm. First there's a wall of candy and then there's a bunch of words I don't understand. I don't know what's happening to <laughs> Angel. Angel. They didn't say the Yacht Club growing up? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Angel and Sadie actually had something very similar to say where they were talking about how people often don't want to hear an apology. Mm -hmm. Either they brush past it or for some reason they're enjoying the grudge. You know, they're like, yeah, I just blocked her. Didn't I win? You know, let's yeah. not walk around trying to count coup on our friends, but rather look for ways to deepen our relationships. Crisis is often the place in which the strongest bonds are made, right? Where you make up with somebody you share something that's more intimate than like just somebody that you had a chat with in the supermarket or on the subway or something like that, right? So so it's worthwhile pursuing. I love that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it truly is just like the friends that you have, if you go through those tough times, it's showing that you're like a 3D person. But then if you're sorry, it shows that you like value their relationship enough. Because it is, I will say it is hard to say sorry sometimes, but if you can do it, it's, it's, a, it's a good gesture. And there's both sex and candy references to it. There is a sorry bar, and we know that making up is a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, and that's so true. <laughs> Try to bring it right back around to the summertime, summertime, summer of love theme that we've had so far this week. <laughs> that's what we call this week, the summer of love. The summer of love. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, now that we have gone through this question, we've actually gone through all of the questions that we've had this week. And that means that there's one last thing to do. And it is announce the winner of the winner's round, the champion of the week. So the way that this works is we will go through each of the seven questions, one answer each, the one that you voted for in the last round. And then we're going to vote for the final, final, finals. There can be only one because we're based in America. We know about championships. It can only be one. It's not fair, is it? But nevertheless, that's the way that we're made. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to vote for one and we're going to say it's the best. But there are lots of good answers in here. I actually love them all and I've learned a lot this week. But nevertheless, it is time for us to vote. So with no further ado, let's go recap. Yes, let's go recap. We will, and then eventually we'll have the capitalist ideal of a single winner. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there they are. Creative destruction. If my love life was a candy bar, it would be the zero candy bar. Chris is answering the question, if your love life was a candy bar, what would it be? So growing up, I was always told your attitude will determine your altitude. And it stuck with me and I didn't really understand it until I got older, but it has stuck with me all this time. And I'm like, now that I got it, I'm gonna hold on to it and I'm gonna keep on sharing. So Andre's answering the question, what's the best piece of advice that you ever received that you want to hear with the so world? So my favorite gift is the one that's right behind me. It is a hand carved map from Etsy. My girlfriend gave it to me for our anniversary and it's the sweetest thing ever. Here's a close up. You can even see like, the little pins on the map. It's just incredible. Christina's telling us about the best gift she ever received. If I was a skywriter, I would definitely do like short two to three word like phrases that are upbeat, positive, motivating, because it's just like really cool to see something being written in the sky in general. But uh, you know that there's gonna be someone that it's gonna apply to if you say like, be patient or your time is coming. Uh, Alexis answering the question is if you could write a message across the sky for the whole world to see. Well, eat together, fun together, and celebrate together makes my family wonderful. Thank you. Jawad is telling us what makes his family different and wonderful. I feel like I owe someone from my past an apology, but I mean, we don't talk, so. She blocked me on social media. I can't apologize and I'm not going to track her down. So yeah. I guess she won't ever get it. Right, but that's the reason why. This is the answer to the question. Uh, who do you want to apologize to? Why have you? The best pet in the world is that they can float. Yeah, um, it's, it's, a, it's a rubber duck. Their name is Ducky and Ducky can speak. What's up, Ducky? 
Dude, you need to see a therapist. <laughs> That's rude. Oh, the very funny Bop is answering the question. Uh, what makes your pet the best in the whole world? Facetiously, I should add. So guys, it's now it's time to vote. There are seven awesome answers, but we got to put one right on the top of the pyramid. So let's click on one of the blue buttons across the bottom of your screen and send one of these people to the finals. If you haven't yet gone and clicked one of those links in the chat that enables you to vote, now would be the time. Let's vote for one of our people and make them the champion of the week. Yes. What week is it? Does anybody know what? I mean, it is obviously the week of, of summer, summertime or the <laughs> summer of love. But do you remember what week number it is? 24, I believe. 423. I love it. Uh, I thought it, this was a particularly good week, both in terms of answers and, uh, you know, questions, if I do say so. I would agree with that. It was a lot of fun. Oh, Christina. Christina wins for what is the best gift that you've ever received? And she said it was this really cool map that she got from a girlfriend from Etsy, but it's kind of a promise of all the things that they're going to do together. That's why I love that one. It wasn't really about the thing. It was about their relationship and about people and, and you know, fun. I really like it. That, I thought that was a great gift as well. Yeah. Well-deserved win for Christina. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it also speaks to just the theme of the week, which it's, we've talking, we've been talking about how it's a uh, summertime, summertime. I feel like it was also just relationships, you know, helping other people out, remembering your relationships with your family and your friends and your pets. So, you know, just a great week for uh, relationships. And that answer really speaks to that, I would say. Right. And remember the peanut M&M is the mature M&M, right? <laughs> that is the one that you want to represent your relationship. Uh, <laughs> if you like peanuts, if you're allergic to peanuts, don't have that one. Have a different M&M. The pretzel m ms <laughs> The pretzel m Exactly. It's got that salty sweet thing too, just like the peanuts. It's very good. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite Well, we have now finished that week, which was a great week. And now we're ready to start next week. And so this is going to be another round of questions. We get a question every day. We have the opportunity to answer. You mash the orange record button. You can record yourself shows up in the show it'll be playing all day long in our 24-hour live game stream where other people can see it and vote for it and then if it gets enough votes it's going to be on the big show and who knows maybe it'll even show up in one of the recaps but it's you know it's the magic of being on the air it's the magic of qotd so i guess that the the natural question is what's today's question Right, we're what's, you know, tomorrow's question, if you guys don't mind leaning forward a tad and giving us a chance to think a bit. Mm -hmm. Well, we have some really a, new ones. Exciting. Yeah, we've got a great week coming up. Uh, if you like this week, you're gonna love next week. Definitely jump on board and record with us. Um, we're going around the world. That's our theme for next week. Uh, we're talking about stranger encounters and road trips and awesome hometowns and big dreams. We got all kinds of stuff to talk about next week. Super excited. Come on, don't let me hang in. All right. Give me, one. Give me one. All right. This is the sneak peek. We wanted to know about a time that a stranger brought a smile to your face or a tear to your eye. Very inspiring. Mm -hmm. Very inspiring. Very good. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to be scratching my head and coming up with a good answer to the last time that somebody did something, a stranger did something that really moved me and made me smile. Unless that's, a, that's an innuendo. Like candy. <laughs> no candy. more innuendos. Oh, I saw you. Oh, no, this is straight I... up. Okay, got it. <laughs> Inspirational acts of kindness. Got it. Because those mm -hmm. happen all the time. You know what? We live near New York City and we spend a lot of time there and it's supposed to be the meanest city in the world. But you know what? You get a chance to see some of the kindest things all the time. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll plumb the depths of my memories and come up with something really, really good. I'm looking forward to hearing what everybody else has to say. And so on behalf of QOTD, Consolidated Wonder and BeOnTheAir.com, let me say thank you so much to everybody who watched, voted and recorded. And we just can't wait to see you on TV. Bye, everyone.
Bye. Have a good week. Bye.